Talk. I am back. And if you see my title, so um, first of all, I'm going to start with this. Okay. Well, let me tell you the title first. So I'm changing. I'm getting ready to, you know, prepare dinner for dad and all that stuff. And God tells me, he says, I need you to get back on here and correct something. I said that maybe women can be co-pastors. God said no. But before I get into that, those that ordered, I want y'all to know, the shirts came in. That's the best way to do it. I'm trying to show y'all. So I'll be sending them out. Fast, pray, obey. And the back of it is the God of, uh oh, wait a minute. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have all sizes until 4X. Um, yeah. All right. And that's for those that actually, <laughs> I think it was a student that asked me to have them made. And you guys wanted them. So I was like, okay, you know, because I say it all the time, fast, pray, and obey. All right. So I'm getting ready. I'm doing my thing in the kitchen. And God says, I need you to correct something. And as you know, I'm going to be very obedient. So God was like, no, women cannot be co-pastors. I was like, okay, because I was trying to give them the benefit of a doubt. I know they couldn't be a pastor, but maybe help their husband. So let me walk this thing out clearly. And so there's no confusion. The reason why God doesn't want any women in an authoritative position is because that's what's happening in the church. We're talking about the Jezebel spirit now. If... I'm going to have to walk this thing out. This is not going to be no one, two, three video. Okay. God wants the men in position so that men can also be strong and do what they're supposed to do. That has been taken from them. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So now, and I witnessed this myself in several churches. Let me put this thing like this. I've witnessed it in seven different churches where the pastor was the pastor, but the woman, the wife, <laughs> she was wrecking up things. She was, I'm going to have to work this thing. I ain't got no choice. I, I can't be. All right. She was messing up her feelings. You know, um, I'm going to go ahead and use myself as example because this actually happened. And those that know that this happened, you don't have to put on here who, what, because I'm sure you remember because everybody saw that one. So it was years ago and it happened in Sacramento, California. And um, I think this was in. I don't know, y'all, 28, 29, 2009, 2008, I don't remember. And I was going to give Pastor some money and a book. And what happened is his wife was sitting on the side of him. So, and I was not out of order because, you know, I was younger. Um, long story short, when I went to give him the book, the woman slung me around. I was so embarrassed. Oh my God. I think everybody remember that day because everybody looked and everybody asked me. I don't know what happened. So slung me around to the seat in her. I mean, it was crazy. I never forgot I never forgot that. I never will because I just sat there in the seat with my eyes closed, like, can I disappear? Because it looked like, you know, she got upset. So I remember opening my eyes and I looked at Pastor and I said, Pastor, if I said or did anything, I'm sorry. He said, you didn't do nothing. I remember that man of God said, they say, no, you didn't do anything. And so, you know, I left, but I felt some kind of way. I didn't want to go to that church again. Cause I was like, you know, everybody kept asking me, what did I do? I said, I don't know what I did. So later on, God explained to me, the lady was really jealous. She had a jealous spirit and I don't know why I don't have to judge that woman of God. That's what I'm talking about. Because pastors, that's your fault too, God say, you give the woman of God so much to say and to do until she thinks that she's running the church. God said this should not be. That's why it's all out of order. Because women get emotional. I'm a woman. I know what I'm talking about. I don't get as emotional as most women, but we get emotional. And just like that thing, if I wasn't already a woman of God, that would have shook my faith what she did to me because I was embarrassed and that was not right. And I didn't deserve it because I have never, I'm going to say that again. I'm 52. I ain't never disrespected a man of God. I'm, I don't, I, I don't roll like that. I'm not a witch. I, I don't know how to do that. I have never, even if I thought in my head, let's be real. Oh, he fine. I never go to, I ne never, that's just never, that's just not my DNA. So long story short, good thing. I was a strong young woman, you know, to where I didn't let it affect me. 
but that thing could have affected me, you know, like, okay, I don't trust no woman of God, you know, but, and I'm saying this to say she had so much power that she shouldn't have had. And I'm just being real. Let me tell y'all something. We got to get this thing right. This is not about pride. This is not about this or that. You men got to stop putting your wives in position that was only meant for men. So that's some of y'all fault. So no, a woman cannot even be co-pastor, God says. God says only prophetess or just a woman of God. And let me tell y'all something. There's nothing wrong with being just a woman of God. Come on, somebody. Because I'm going to talk to y'all about Rahab, the harlot. Come on, somebody. She was a harlot. And yet she is talked about all through the Bible, not only through the Bible. I'm sorry, just that one passage. But the thing is, God said it should be told everywhere we go. People talk about Rahab because she hit the two spies. And she was a harlot. She wasn't even a woman of God. But she's now one today. And forevermore, God said, come on, somebody, hallelujah. So it's not about titles. And I think that's what has happened. The enemy got everybody caught up in titles and in power. And now God is just bringing that thing down, tearing it all down, saying, no, this is not of God. Now, the second thing I want to talk about. God is so real. I'm telling you, I was not going to get back up on here, but he made me. I want to give you the definition of a teacher, of teaching. Teaching is the occupation, profession of work of a teacher. Ideas are principles taught by an authority. So in first in Second Timothy, when he says, let me go back to it. I don't want to, mm -mm. we're going to do everything by the book these days. I ain't playing with y'all. Okay, so when he says, First Timothy 2.12, he says, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority. It's about authority. A woman is not supposed to usurp authority. A woman is not supposed to usurp authority. This is for men that still, but don't worry, I'm going to break that thing down right now. I'm going to say teaching again. Teaching. It is the occupation, profession, or work of a teacher. Ideas of principles taught by an authority. That's why he says, I, I, I don't want a woman teaching other men what to do, how to do it. I want a man teaching a man. I want the men teaching the women. All right. Now let's go preaching. Preaching, the delivery of a sermon or religious address to an assembled group of people, typically in church. The giving, uh-oh, here we go. I need y'all to listen to me. The giving of moral advice in a pompously preaching way. Okay, so men, stop saying that a woman is not supposed to preach. Mary Magdalene did it. All the women in the Bible did it. Because you know what they were doing? They were talking about how good God is, how God saved them, how God delivered them, how God healed them. That is preaching all day long. And we are permitted to do such. Hallelujah. So no matter what you say, no matter how you want to try to turn it around, teaching and preaching is not the same thing. Because preaching is it's just like, let, let's go down. Let's say somebody did a great job. Oh, I'm going to praise you. You did a great job. That's the same thing as preaching about that person. I'm going to preach about them because they did such a great work. We are preaching about our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot take that from us, no matter how much you want to do that. Now, the teacher part, you got that. That's real. That's real. We, we, we already read it, that a teacher is someone that's in authority and supposed to teach of authority. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I hope that we now have a distinction between the two and the truth. That's one thing about God. God, God will here unfold that thing all the way to the end it's not about what we think but it's about what we know and god is a god of order come on somebody hallelujah so i want to get up on here and correct when i said that women could be co-pastors no they cannot god interrupted my whole i was getting ready to you know i took off my you know clothes or whatever and i was getting ready to just do everything god said no you gotta you gotta correct that i don't want women in position at all that's not the order i made Thank you, Lord. I hear you. God just told me something. The enemy. <laughs> oh, he's good. Oh, I'm about to preach a little. I'm about to preach a little. Let me tell you what, what the enemy then did. The enemy then came and what he tries to do is he tries to shift the order of God. That's why they have homosexuality. A woman thinking she's a man. A man thinking he's a woman. Anything that is the order of God, the enemy tries to shift it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And that's what's happening. That's what the enemy is doing. Everything. Anointing oil. Y'all be tripping about anointing oil. Five per, um, verses in that Bible says that you, that you can sell anointing oil. 
if God give you permission. Oh, let, let's go further. Let's go further. We keep talking about sage. Sage is wicked. Are you saying that everything that it is in the cup? And if I pray devilish his prayers, then that's witchcraft. But if I pray the blessings of God, then that's the anointing of God. So it is not the content of the material. It is the content of what you use it in. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm so tired of y'all don't be teaching. Y'all don't be preaching, right? Teaching, right? Whatever. Both. If you're going to do this thing, do this thing the way God told you to teach biblical principles. Stay away from from feebles and tales and all that. to be in. Come on, let's just keep it honest and real. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of tired. I, I was not trying to get back up on here, but when he said, you better correct that now, I got up on here. <laughs> 